How many connectives are there? Let's consider. Hello, I'm Chico. Welcome to the Philosopher Channel Introduction to Propositional Logic course. In the last video, we saw how one connective can be defined using other connectives. In this video, we're going to see all the connectives that there are. And in the next video, we're going to see how to use one or two connectives to define all other connectives that are possible. So uh, that's sort of the roadmap here. Let's get into it looking at our first kinds of connectives, one place connectives. And so far, we only have one one place connective, we have the negation. And here is the truth table for that. When alpha is true, then not alpha is false. And when alpha is false, then not alpha is true. But that's not the only possible uh, truth table that we could have. So what kinds of true tables could we have? So let's consider a blank connective here, star alpha, right? We're not sure what this connective can be. And let's consider all the different possible combinations of truth values that we could have here. Now, when alpha is true, we have two options. Star alpha could be true or star alpha could be false, right? So those are two options there. And then when alpha is false, what happens with star alpha? Well, again, star alpha can be true or false, but notice star alpha can be true or false given the fact that it was at first true, or it could be true or false given the fact that it was at first false, right? It was false on that first row. So we have uh, another group of two options. So right here we have two, times two options or two squared options. We have four options, right? One, two, three, four. And here's what it looks like. True, 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 false, false, true, false, false. Those are our different possible combinations. And writing those neatly into a, a little table here, true, 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 false, false, true, false, false. And uh, we can name all of these guys. And the way that I'm going to name them is I'll put a circle for a connective, a one inside of that circle to let us know that it's a one place connective. And then we use the subscript numbers just to number off the, the connectives from there. One, two, and four is what we have here. Obviously in three, we don't have a connective because three is our negation connective, right? It's that false true form. Um, looking at the first row, right, that seems kind of weird. That just makes, no matter what alpha is, it makes the result uh, true. And the last one, no matter what alpha is, star alpha would be false. And the second one, uh, no matter what alpha is, star alpha would be identical, right? If alpha is true, star alpha would be true. If alpha is false, star alpha would be false. Yeah, so it looks like the only useful one would be the negation, but I don't know. Anyway, so those are the one place connectives. Two place connectives. In two place connectives, we're going to have more combinations to worry about, right? We're going to have when alpha is true and beta is true, when alpha is true and beta is false, when alpha is false, beta is true, and when alpha is false and beta is false. So we're going to have to figure out you know, what are the different possible combinations that, that we can have here? And so when alpha is true and beta is true, alpha star beta could be true or alpha star beta could be false. And then when alpha is true and beta is false, alpha star beta could be true and false. And then when alpha is false and beta is true, same, diff same thing. And then finally for alpha is false and beta is false. And let's count up all of those different possibilities. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen possibilities. And it's sixteen possibilities because again, we start with two options, and then we have two times those two options. And then we have two times those two options and two times those two options. So since we have four different uh, spots to fill out here, then we have two to the fourth 
different possibilities. Add 2 to the 4th equals 16. And what does that look like? It looks like so. Those are all of our possible connectives. So let's keep that counting principle in our back pocket here. Uh, depending on how many spots we have to fill in here, our uh, number of possibilities will be 2 to that number um, of spots. Looking at our two-place connectives, you can see we're, we're naming them the same way. Circle stands for the connective. 2 stands for the two-place connective. And then the subscript, we just numerate them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, all the way to 16. Of course, there's OR there for the number 2. There's the arrow for number 5, double arrow for number 7, AND for number 8. And then there's that exclusive disjunction for number 10. So those are all of our connectives. We haven't gone over three-place connectives. And of course, you could go, you know, three, four, five. You can keep going if you'd like to. But we haven't gone over them because number one, you know, one and two place connectives are enough for us. We're just learning. And second of all, in English, we don't really have a three place connective. So we don't really need to worry about it. Um, in the footnotes, uh, Smith opines that we could have a three place connective. He talks about Wayne's world where they use the word not at the end, right? So they say something like, uh, that's a nice name, not. Right. So now and that's like saying that's not a nice name, but you put the not at the end and he says, well, maybe we could have like that be a three place connective. Right. So you could have three propositions. That's a nice name. I'm having fun. This tie is black. Not. And that not negates either. Now we'd have to decide what we want, like either negates all three of those propositions individually or just negates, you know, the the conjunction of the three so that at least one of those has to be false, possibly all of them false, right? Something like that. Um, but yeah, we don't really have anything in English that's like that. So we can, however, figure out how many possible connectives there would be by counting off one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have eight spots here. So that would be two to the eight power of connectives which equals 256. So there'd be 256 connectives. That's another reason why we're not doing that because I am not gonna write out 256 possible connectives. That is for homework if you'd like to, enjoy that. There is also surprisingly a zero place connective. And you may think a zero place connective, what the heck is that? Uh, I agree, kind of weird. Uh, Smith argues for it by saying, it's not so weird because if you think about it, um, an n place connective connects n number of propositions to make a proposition. Uh, so we have a zero place connective connecting to zero numbers of proposition to make a proposition. Um, so it technically, you know, follows those rules. Uh, Here is what the truth table would look like. Just star. There wouldn't be any proposition, right? There would be no alpha or anything like that that we would uh, we would conjoined to this because it doesn't have any places for that. There are two possibilities we could have. This thing could be true or this thing could be false. And that makes sense because when we see that there's just one spot right here, this would be two to the one power and two to the one power is two. So uh, here are two possibilities here then. The proposition that is just true is called the verum and the one that is false is called the falsum. Um, they don't say anything, right? Like they don't have any kind of content. They're just either true or they are false. So kind of weird, like isn't a proposition supposed to say something? But we can even use these one place connectives to define other connectives. So for example, to define the negation, here's the truth table for the negation. And let me run through this alpha, if alpha, then falsum. And you'll see that that is uh, equivalent to not alpha. So First, I'll distribute the T's and F's. The conditional is only false when the antecedent is true and the consequent is false. That's in row one. Otherwise, it's true. That's in row two. And you can see now we have the exact same truth table as not alpha. So we can use this to define not alpha. So there you go.
then those are all the zero, the one place, the two place connectives, and how you would get three and beyond. In the next video, as I said, we're gonna look how one or two connectives can define all the rest of the connectives that you can think of. So I'll see you in that video. Adios.